Hi everyone, welcome to Hotline 21 Can TV. My name is Brenda and I am from Connections for Abused Women and Their Children. My guest today is Jennifer. Hi. And today we're going to be talking about domestic violence. Jennifer, yes. thank you for coming. Anytime. Um, so I want to start off by um, informing whoever is watching right now and whoever might be asking themselves whether or not they're in an abusive relationship or not. Um, what is domestic violence? Um, honestly, it just boils down to a system of power and control between an abuser who exerts power over a victim or survivor. And it's really important to remember that this isn't just in, you know, relationships between a man and a woman. Um, st like, statistically speaking, women are more often abused than men in, relation in abusive relationships. However, it's really important to recognize that any relationship can be abusive. A man can abuse a man, a woman can abuse a woman, a woman can abuse a man. That, like, any relationship can have that power and control dynamic. Absolutely. And I just wanted to invite everyone who is watching right now to uh, please call the number that you see below, the 312-738-1060. Um, if you have any questions about domestic violence, um, if you know anyone or think you're going through domestic violence, and if you have any questions right now, we have a window of 25 minutes that you can call and ask us anything that you'd like about domestic violence. Um, so like Jenny was saying, um, mm -hmm. domestic violence is something that affects everyone regardless of either sexual orientation or gender identity. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so what are some of the myths besides the ones that I just mentioned mm -hmm. about domestic violence? I think one of the biggest ones that I hear is that if a victim stays in an abusive situation that she wants to be abused or that she's inviting that abuse or that she is somehow responsible for it. Right. And that is not true. There are so many reasons why people stay in abusive relationships that have nothing to do with them being responsible for that abuse. They could be thinking of their safety, the most dangerous time for a woman to leave, a woman or a man, whoever is the victim in the relationship, the most difficult time for them to leave the relationship, the most dangerous time, is when they're going to leave the relationship. Um, that is when they're more at risk for any acts of violence, homicide, anything that could happen from that. They're more at risk when they're leaving that relationship. Mm -hmm. So if they know that, they're less likely to leave at that point. They could also, if they have children with their abuser, they could be thinking of the safety of their children. Or the abuser could be using their children as another form of abuse, threatening to call um, child services on them and, you know, get their children taken away from them if they try to leave the relationship. Or threatening to abuse their children if they try to leave the relationship. So there are so many factors that go into that other than the victim inviting the abuse. Absolutely. So that is a huge myth that really needs to be broken. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so you mentioned um, forms of abuse, mm -hmm. and I think that also one of uh, one of the most common myths about domestic violence is that it's only a violent relationship mm -hmm. if it is physical violence. If you can see the harm that is being done, is that right. is that true? Yes. Um, people, a lot of the people that I've worked with don't know that they're in abusive relationships if they haven't been hit. Mm -hmm. And the truth is that domestic violence can be emotional violence, it can be verbal violence, there can be technological abuse, where the abuser basically takes control of their victim's technology. So they are reading through all of their text messages, they are reading through their Facebook messages, they are hacking into their Facebook or email, trying to know basically where their victim is, all the time and who they're talking to and having complete control of their life. That is a form of abuse even though they are not being physically hit or assaulted. Absolutely. Um, there's also financial abuse where the abuser can restrict the economic resources of their victim. So they can make it impossible for their victim to 
get a job or go to work if they have a job. Yeah. They can show up at their workplace mm -hmm. and threaten them or harass them so much that they end up getting fired mm -hmm. because they're becoming a danger to the workplace. Yeah. There's a lot of different forms of abuse that aren't mm -hmm. just physical. Um, and if you are out there watching and you're like me, I am more of a visual person and so I need to see things in a visual manner. Um, so like Jennifer mentioned, um, there is physical violence. Um, and so what that means is using coercion and threats and, and or carrying out those threats to do something to hurt them, um, threatening to leave them um, or threatening to commit suicide and to report them to, to welfare and, and making them do illegal things. Um, another form of violence is um, using your words simply mm -hmm. and um, intimidating. Um, even if it's not verbally, you can also intimidate someone physically by, by making them afraid of your stare or um, using other gestures such as smashing things or destroying their property. Um, there's been many times where victims state that, you know, they used to have a car and, and they mm -hmm. no longer have a car because um, their abuser destroyed it. And also, while they may not be using any weapons against them, um, they may be displaying their weapons um, as a way to intimidate them. Um, you're also in an abusive relationship if someone is being um, if someone is being put down constantly, if you're constantly feeling bad about the relationship that you're in because they tell you that you're ugly, that you're fat, that you're not worth anything, those are very painful and hurtful words that that shouldn't be used in a loving relationship. Um, um, using isolation, which can be pretty common. That's um, a big one. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, one of the things that I really see in the victims that I work with is that their abuser usually does isolate them before anything else, like slowly. It's not usually a drastic thing where they stop you from talking to your friends or your family, but they'll slowly isolate you and it's usually really manipulative. Mm -hmm. So they'll maybe start saying things like, oh, I don't like when you talk to this friend because they don't like me and they're gonna try to break us up. Mm -hmm. Or, I don't like when you talk to your mom about this because your mom doesn't like me and I think she's going to try to do something to break up our relationship. Right. Yeah. Or and so what that like ends that. up happening is that um, a victim ends up with no family or friends mm -hmm. to be supportive because the abuser has tried to, um, has, has um, you know, destroyed all of their positive relationships mm -hmm. in their lives. Um, and then, you know, just lastly, also using economic abuse, like mm -hmm. Jennifer mentioned, um, you know, keeping them from getting a job or using their, their privilege, um, if it's a cisgender mm -hmm. relationship, using their male privilege and um, acting like they are the master of the relationship and that they should do things mm -hmm. for them because they are, they are men and that somehow means something more than it should be. And then also using children as a form of abuse. Mm -hmm. um, um, the children are oftentimes in violent relationships um, confused. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So one myth about children is that um, they, that someone believes that they don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And children are smarter than we think they are. They really and they are, often yeah. do know what is going on. Um, and they are also being used in the, in as as a pawn in the in mm -hmm. the relationship as well yeah um so i would just like to remind everyone again that you're watching can tv hotline 21 and if you have any questions about domestic violence um, or if you want to share anything with us um, please call 312-738-1060 and also if you want to reach us directly at our agency um this is our agency um 24-hour domestic violence hotline so that means that when you call at any time um, even on the upcoming holidays there mm -hmm. will be someone who will answer your phone call at 773-278-4566 um, and we also have a website if you're interested in looking at the services that we provide um, we are at www.cawc.org 
and we also have services in multiple languages and they are all free and confidential. Um, so tell us a little bit about what the cycle of violence is and what it looks like in a relationship. Yeah, um, the violence usually starts as like a honeymoon period. At the beginning it's very nice, the abuser is very sweet, very caring. Sometimes they'll shower their victim with gifts or, you know, just trying to prove, I guess, that they're trustworthy and gain their victim's trust. And then after this, you kind of have this tension building phase where there are maybe some more arguments where the abuser starts picking at more things yeah, with this, the victim. This is around the time where the this mm -hmm. common phrase is used where people feel like they're walking on eggshells. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that is when they're trying to be the most careful because the belief is that we might, the, the victim might be doing something to cause mm -hmm. the abuse. But that is also another myth. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. So during this time, anything might be setting the abuser off in a way. So maybe the abuser comes home from work and the person affected by the abuse forgot to take out the trash or something and the abuser immediately will jump on it and start arguing about it or yelling at the victim. If it's a physical violence situation, he might start beating the victim. He or she might start beating the victim. Mm -hmm. um, again, um, if you are like me, mm -hmm. I'm a visual learner, um, or, and this is, I, I understand things better when I see them visually, so. Um. Yeah, so here you can see the cycle of violence. It starts with that honeymoon phase, and then goes up to that tension building, and then it goes to the explosion, mm -hmm. which is where you get like the full amount of abuse. So when the abuser really shows how abusive they can be, they'll severely beat the victim, there might be sexual abuse, there, the emotional abuse might get to the point where the victim doesn't get any sleep because the abuser is yelling at them all the time. And after this, there it goes right back to that honeymoon phase. There's this kind of calm after the storm feeling yeah. where the abuser will try to convince the victim that they didn't mean what happened. They still love them. They might buy them a lot of flowers or presents again, trying to be like, I'm so sorry that that happened. That's not me. I just got really angry. I'll never do it again. Mm -hmm. And this is also a way of denying that ever, anything even ever happened, mm -hmm. that they are not, that they are not abusive, and that they didn't mean it, that they have no control over it. When in reality, is that they have control of everything because of mm -hmm. the abuse that they they are perpetrating mm -hmm. um, against the victim. Um, and unfortunately, as time goes on and the abuse gets gets worse in this circle, um, the honeymoon phase uh, goes away. The honeymoon phase mm -hmm. goes away and things might start getting worse, which means that things might start getting more dangerous. Um, so, for example, um, threatening to kill them, mm -hmm. um, using um, choking as a means to abuse them, which can be lethal, um, and also threatening to kill themselves or everyone, mm -hmm. including the children. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so those are things yeah. too. And it's really important, the choking aspect that Brenda mentioned, a lot of people don't think that it's that dangerous. They're like, well, why is choking a big deal? Like, you just put your hands around their neck and you stop it after a little bit. But the, you will get permanent brain damage if your brain is deprived of oxygen for three minutes. So that is three minutes that the abuser has to permanently damage you or kill you. Yeah. And that's not a lot of time mm -hmm. when you're in these situations. Mm -hmm. So, and that's why uh, Jenny mentioned that um, when a victim is leaving the relationship, um, that it can be one of the most dangerous times because mm -hmm. most often that means that the abuse has gotten worse. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, then that is when they might seek out any um, help mm -hmm. uh, or any help or call someone um, to help them get out of the situation that they're in. Um, 
So if you know anyone, um, or if you are anyone that is going through a violent relationship and anything that we're saying sounds vaguely familiar to you um, about yourself or about anyone that you know, please feel free to call our 24-hour domestic violence hotline. Like I mentioned, um, uh, we are still going to be open and receiving phone, call phone calls during the holidays. Okay. So, um, in all of this, um, what are some of the things that a victim can do um, to protect themselves in this sort of situation? Yeah. If the victim is comfortable with it, I usually will recommend first, I, I usually ask them if they've contacted the authorities or the police. Um, sometimes they're not comfortable with doing that and that's completely understandable. Sometimes their abuser is part of the police, you know, they're part of the police force. And so that avenue isn't really available to them. So after that, I always check on their support system and ask them, you know, are you in contact with your family, your parents? Are you, do you have any close friends that can help you out? Any of those services they might already have in place and how they can use them to get out of that situation. Because if they have family members or friends that they are close to, they can go to them and maybe stay with them for a couple days before they find another place to live. Um, and, you know, an emergency shelter or a domestic violence shelter. Or they might be able to get an apartment within those days. They might be able to stay with their friend a little bit longer. They can use those support systems to kind of build up their own sense of control over their own lives, which is really important because when you're in that abusive relationship, that abusive situation, you don't have that sense of control anymore. Mm -hmm. So it might feel like you can't do anything mm -hmm. when really you might have those supports in place to escape that situation. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the main reasons why I always encourage, I want to encourage everyone that if, if you are someone who's going through this kind of situation mm -hmm. or if you know someone, to really encourage them to talk to someone um, it can be very difficult to talk to your family about it or your friends because um, automatically they want to tell you what to do mm -hmm. and they want to overprotect yeah. you. Um, so sometimes it's helpful to talk to someone who has an unbiased um, uh, information to provide mm -hmm. to the victims. Um, and also, this is a good way to do safety planning. So there are probably mm -hmm. already so many things that they are already doing, right. that you already are doing to keep yourself safe, but maybe together we can come up with um, a better plan mm -hmm. uh, for safety um, for anyone involved in the situation. Mm -hmm. And I also wanted to mention that in Illinois, there is the Illinois Domestic Violence Act mm -hmm. um, that clearly states that um, perpetrating violence against anyone um, is a crime. So we would also provide you with that information once you call the hotline and give you information about, mm -hmm. you know, whether or not um, you would like to get an order of protection. And yeah. you can tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, there are actually a couple ways to get an order of protection. First of all, there is a civil and a criminal order of protection. So basically what that means is if you want a civil order of protection, that means that you don't have any police reports to support your case. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you can't get an order of protection, it just means you're going to yeah. go through civil court as opposed to the criminal court. Yeah, and I would always, you know, even recommend, like, don't focus on the things that you do have proof of or the things that you don't have proof of, you know, that is not absolutely always necessary. Mm -hmm. So just if that's something that you would want to do, again, call someone who has who has information about this, who might have more information about it, and it does not hurt to not try mm -hmm. if that's something that you want. Um, mm -hmm. So even, so what the order of protection would essentially mm -hmm. do and say is that under this order of protection, um, you are not legally allowed to harass mm -hmm. or, or perpetrate any violence against me. And if you do, I can report it. Right. Right. Yeah. And if you are interested in obtaining an order of protection, you, if you just want more information about one, feel free to call our hotline at CWC. There are several domestic violence agencies in Chicago. Feel free to give any of them a call. Um, 
and at CAWC we do have legal advocates that can help explain the process to you. They work at our office and they work at the court itself mm -hmm. at 555 West Harrison. Yes. So if you are interested in obtaining one, feel free to give us a call and ask us about it or just go to 555 West Harrison and ask for a legal advocate there mm -hmm. and they can walk you through it, help you fill out the paperwork. Don't fill out any of it yourself. Sometimes it's really confusing, so definitely ask questions. Try to find a legal advocate there who can help you along the way. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so if you are just watching or you've been watching us and you have any questions, um, you, there are five minutes left and we are happy to answer any questions or address any comments that you have. So if you do call, call the 312-738-1060. And a reminder, um, what our agency, um, what our 24-hour domestic violence, violence hotline is. It's the 773-278-4566. And I also have another one that I would like to share with you. And... Oh, this is the same one. So, like I said, if you have any questions, please feel free to call us right now or call us at any time at this phone number. Okay, so. Um, so, while um, victims have the option, some victims have the option of getting an order of protection, um, is there a risk that getting an order of protection might put them mm -hmm. in more danger and and how so yes so if you sometimes if a victim gets an order of protection the abuser might retaliate against that more they might increase the level of abuse they might stop them or come after them um, so that is something to be aware of if you're interested in getting an order of protection know your situation and think about what the person who abuses you is capable of doing so it looks like we have a caller, um, so thank you for calling us, caller. Hello? Hi. Hi. Hi, I had a question. Do you guys have volunteer opportunities? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you for... Thank you for asking that question. Mm -hmm. We do have volunteer opportunities. So um, we provide a 40-hour domestic violence training mm -hmm. at Connections for Abused Women and Their Children. I highly recommend that you go over to our website. Um, there you will learn about each program that we have and, and really be able to look at what kind of services we provide to decide whether or not you would like to volunteer. Mm -hmm. um, our, like I said, our training is at 40 hours, and um, if you call the, either the hotline or you go to the website and you call um, either of those phone numbers, you will be directed to the volunteer and, mm -hmm. volunteer and education coordinator, and they will be able to provide you with all that information. Mm -hmm. um, I'm always really excited, and I really encourage everyone to um, do something um, yeah. to create awareness about domestic violence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you for calling. Um, so, um, where were we? Um, orders of protection. Yeah, um, we were talking about orders of protection and whether or not um, they um, work can, yes, for or everyone. Yes, or if they can um, increase or decrease the safety of the victim mm -hmm. after they get it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and so um, like I said before, if you have any questions, please feel free to call our hotline phone number um, and I would like to thank everyone for watching today and calling today um, if you were too shy to call today uh, please feel free to call our hotline or look at our website um, we we hope that you learned something new today about domestic violence or 
that maybe your perspective changed a little bit mm -hmm. in regards to victims and domestic violence. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you would like to say to us, Jennifer? Thank you for watching. Thank you for calling. And I really hope that if anyone in your life is affected by domestic violence, that you get them in that you can get them in contact with the appropriate resources. Thank you.